Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and this is the second video in that mini Next.js build um, where I built that API. We spent a lot of time where I was just trying to kind of show you about dynamic uh, params. So let me just kind of finish that point. So bottom line is if you wanted to get uh, the params, if you're using a dynamic route, you could do home.getInitialProps. Okay, so you're defining this method um, and then what this does is you it gets this object with a whole bunch of stuff. So what you want to do is destructure the query from it. Um, that's going to be where the see like this where the param query is. And again, hello is the part is the dynamic part of the route. Okay, because so, again that's what the square brackets mean. It means it's dynamic. So then what I do is I return and actually I could just make this even simpler. Actually, let me think about that. Uh, now I'd have to keep it that way. So then this this object becomes the props. Whatever I, this function returns becomes the props. So props has a property called query, which is this object here, which inside of it has all the URL params. Okay, so right now that's running. So let's go show you right here. So right now, if I keep typing in different things here, so Gouda, if I type in cheese, see it becomes cheese. If I type in my name, it becomes Alex, because what I'm doing is I'm grabbing that, that param. Okay, so that's how dynamic URLs work. Okay, now what I wanted to do, okay, so let me get that API working again. Let's see, is the API running? I don't think so. So let me get the API running, and then let's cd into project one, and then cd into API, and do node server.js. Okay, that server's running. What I'm gonna wanna do is grab the data from this API and generate a bunch of pre-made routes uh, based on the URL. So we're going to, so I'm going to create a new folder. Um, we'll call this blogs, because again, this is like a mock blog API. And then we're going to create a new file called ID dot JS. Okay, and then I'm just going to copy all the contents of this over there. Okay. Mm, is that the one I wanted now? Hello, that's yes. I want to copy the dynamic one. Here we go. Okie dokie. Now, what I would want to do here is first we have to do get um, we have to define static routes we, so we have to define the actual routes that this URL brings so let me go back to here so we need to do get static paths okay oh, that's not the page I want to look at get static paths and what get static paths does is that it's going to basically determine what are uh, the different paths so basically we do this function Okay. And let me think about this. Async function. Okay, so basically what I want to do here, so I want to go get the my data. So const response equals await fetch, and then we want to fetch HTTP slash, slash www dot local host four 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 slash because the route is just root. Okay, so see that'll get that for that route and then I gotta turn that into JSON so response await response.json okay and then I'm gonna want to make an make a, a array out of that data what I really want is an array of all the indexes because again I'm gonna pull that data based on the index it has in the array so if you remember how that API worked in the first video um, there's a bunch of data and then the second route the show route allows me to specify an ID and it'll show me the data from that. So I need to, to get that. 
I want those to be the routes. Um, so what I want to do is const paths. So paths should be an array of strings that are going to be your potential what fills in this ID, this part of the URL. So equals paths, and I want to do wait data dot map. Okay, and what data dot map it does is data dot map is what I want to do is just take each item, which is technically each blog post. And then I want to take the index of each blog post because technically there is no index property in the blog post itself. And what I want to do is just return. Actually, I just want to return the index. That's it. OK, and that'll make an array where it's just like 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's going to say, OK, the, the potential routes are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. OK. And then I want to return an object with paths in it. Okay, I think that's all I have to pass in. So like this is fallback piece and then some other properties first, but really the only thing I have to pass in is that. Okay, so what this does is it defines the potential paths. Okay, let me just go back to the other terminal so I can see how this is rendering. Okay, and just to make sure that this is like working the way I think it's gonna work, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna console.log paths. Okay, and right now, I'll leave that there, but then after we export this function, that's gonna generate all the potential paths. So now we know there's gonna be like a page called zero, one, two, three, four, five. But the things that she, each post, I wanna send that particular blog's post data to it. So I need to send, that's where get static props comes into play. So export, export async function get static props okay <clears throat> and what I want to do is grab the params from the URL okay let's go down to get static props now that we got that taken care of okay get static props here we go and primes that ID get post data blah 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 okay now here what I'm going to do export async function get static props um, what I want to do with this function is we're gonna do once again another fetch const response equals await fetch and then in this case we're still fetching from the same URL slash slash localhost four 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 except now we're gonna add params dot ID because again the params is going to be this ID thing here so params that ID that'll make the request then we do const data equals response dot JSON okay and then we're going to return an object with the data inside of it that's going to be the props so my expectation is that there's going to be an object, a props is going to be this object that's going to have a property called data, and inside there I'll find the different blog posts. So in that case, theoretically, the way this should work, okay, is that if I want to destructure it, what I should do is... Well, we'll just do it the long way, just because that way you can see how this is shaping up. So technically props dot data dot, because basically what's gonna happen is gonna run these two functions first. So first it runs this function, generates the pass. Once this function completes and that promise resolves, then it runs this function, 
for the fir then it runs this function iteratively once for each path and renders that page and renders all the potential static pages. So props.data.title. Okay. Then p tag for props.data.body. Because again, we're pulling in just that individual blog post. And then we have the picture. So I should probably do that as an image tag. And uh, that would be image source equals um, props.data.image. I'm pretty sure if I remember that's what the property was called. That's going to want an alt, so I'll just do that. Props equals props.data.title. Okay, and that should do it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the server again. Found successfully. Now let's try to go to one of those routes. So that's, was it called blog? Blogs. Okay, so basically that would be blogs, because that's the name of the folder, so it'd be blogs slash one. We must, a fallback, the fallback key must be returned from uh, get static. Got it, so we do have to return that fallback property. So let me go get what that should be. And uh, that was from get static paths. Paths fallback false. So let's go change that fallback. False. So let's try to regenerate that page again. The required parameter ID was not provided as a string in get static paths for blogs ID. Okay, because we can just pass in a bunch of numbers. So in that case, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna return. I'm going to wrap this in backticks, then put this a dollar sign. So that's why this keeps generating all those numbers into strings. Okay, uh, didn't quite like that. But see, it is generating the right array of things. Ah, got it. It's. I need to give it the actual path. So it's got to be like slash logs slash that like that so see now see now it's generating all the possible routes additional keys were returned from get static products properties intended for your component nested under the props key ah I see so this has got to have just take a look at it, get initial props Go back to get static props. Props post data. Okay, yeah, so you have to actually put something called props in there. So this should be props. And props is just called data. There we go. Save. Okay, so that looks like it generated successfully. So let's take a look here. Error so utilizing props return day return from static props. Plain object. Why wasn't this an object? Props data. Serializable error props must be returned as a plain object from get static props. Got it. So they want me to just generate it like a new object. So I think what they want to do is do this and then spread data in there. Is that kind of what they're getting at? Let's give it a shot. Hmm. 
Okay, so good. It did read it this time. Okay, and let's take a look, see if we can see what those props are. Let's go to... Where is this? Let's do this. Let's console log props. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment all this out for a second. Good. Props is empty. Fun. data well we did that return props post data I think I know what it wants just for me to do that Static props, object. Okay, so somebody wants me to do this. Wait. Oh, I see why. I didn't write a wait here. Okay. There we go. That looks better. So, let's see here. If I refresh this page now, that looks good. And okay, now we do have the props there. Good. Yes. Oh, what a, all the di what a difference in a weight it makes. Okay, so just understand what happened there. What happened was I was putting data here, but since I didn't put the await keyword here, I was putting in the promise, not the object data. So that was the reason why that was occurring. So now it's going to be props data. Okay, good. So let me uncomment this out. Okay, and uh, let's see if that works. And well, there we go. So see, this is title two. Now if I go to blog post at the second index, see title three. Nice. Okay, so that's kind of what that does. So see, it just generated all my pages for me. Right now, it's still dynamically rendering them though. Okay, the beauty is when we build. So I'm going to turn this off now. And I am going to do mm, npm run build. I want to let it build out the site. And then I want a static. Uh, oh, I see. This is a summary. So essentially what it does, it does it and it tells you, okay, so these pages, if you see this symbol, that page is going to be server side rendered. If you see this, it's, 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 it's basically either of these are statically generated um, etc. So we take a look at it. API hello is server side generated, uh, etc. Cool. So let's just take a look at the folder that it generated into practice. Um, I think it generates it here into this next folder. So static chunks. So we're fine with that. Pages. Here we go. If I go to blogs and see, there's the HTML page for each of those pages. Okay, it, see, you don't. It doesn't. It's all minified, so it's not going to look like any. It's going to look like gibberish. But the idea is that you're technically not running React anymore when you deploy this. So if I were to do like npm run serve, 
Uh, actually, let's switch the command here. Uh, let's go to package.json. Oh, npm run start. What this is going to do is it's going to actually start the server that serves our deployed or our built version. Okay. So you can see actually that one at work. So now if I go to like localhost, localhost 3000. Okay, that's still the same there. But if I go to blogs, slash one, and see how like quick that loads because it's just loading a static page. Okay, and I go to the next one it should be four. Four. So you see like it's that's the benefit of what Next.js is doing. It allows you to sort of design your code in React, but instead of having React kind of have to do the React work when the person loads up the page, it does what React is going to do, figures out what's the stuff that never really is going to be any different, and generates all those pages. So again, just taking a look at what it generated here. If I go in here, I see, again, static here. I oh, don't know, that wasn't in there. It's here in the server. I see API, I mean, I see like in this uh, blog folder, see so it generated all, and see, look, it, see it puts in the props here. So like, see, it took the JSON and separated it out into a separate JSON document and just set it up in a way. And now let's say later on, I make more blog posts, right? I just have to hit the build button again. I do rebuild, it re-pulls from the API. So I go, it's gonna go back through here. Every time I build, it goes to this logic. It's gonna go back and pull from the API to see if there's any new blog posts. It's going to then generate pages. So if I added like five blog posts, the next time instead of just 11 pages, it's going to generate, let's say, like 17. So the cool thing is you're creating the logic for it to generate your site statically for you. Okay, so you don't, because traditionally when you have a blog, you need to pull for the database because if you add a blog post, it has to check to see if there's a new blog post in the database. But in this case, you could just sit there and say, hey, once, set up your server that it builds automatically once a day. So every once a day, you check to see if there's any new blog posts, it rebuilds the site and deploys it statically. And in this case, it's gonna be cheaper for you to host it. It's gonna run faster. It's gonna be more secure. It's gonna be actually better for search engine optimization. It does all these really cool things for you. And that's sort of like what makes Next awesome. So it allows you to sort of use React in a more advanced way. You could also do server side generated pages so you could actually do it where you know it does these checks live, um, but the real benefit, the real where it really shines, is in those static generated pages. Although if you do have things that you want to be done on the server side, you can do them from here too. So it gives you the best of all worlds. That's sort of the beauty of Next.js. Okay, so um, yeah, there's a lot more to it. Um, but this should hopefully give you an idea of sort of like what, what is the sort of the killer deal here. My name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy.